Well, I don't know whether he turned your morning into. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all didn't say anything. I don't know whether y'all. I, I, I was just standing there. I was just trying to listen. Amen. I wouldn't say anything to see whether or not was that just a song or was y'all dealing with some realities. Oh, praise God. Amen. I, I don't know whether anybody had been mourning or not that the Lord. But it, I, I'm leaving y'all alone. I'm going to move on. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, some things should make you uh, remember uh, some, some things and, you know, should shock your memory. And when your memory is shocked, y'all, uh, you should react. Hallelujah. Amen. I wonder whether or not your neurological circuits is working this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, we, uh, we worshiped the Lord earlier, and we talked to the God, but, you know, amen, that our God, he really is an awesome God. Amen. And God really does reign, and he rules y'all. Amen. And I just wanted to say to you, amen, that we not only worship God in that, but we also declared that. Amen. That the Lord is, amen, that the Lord is ruling and reigning over you on this morning. I don't know what your situation is. Amen. But the Lord is ruling over that. Oh, praise God. Amen. And so whatever God rules over y'all, it means he's got it in control. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you need to let go. Amen. When God got it, amen, why are you still holding on to it? Oh, praise God. Amen. We said that God was our, in the one song we talked about how God is our shield. Amen. And a shield, y'all, I think about the, the, um, the, the capsule, the, you know, when they go to out the space. Amen. One of the critical things that they had to be concerned with, amen, when that when they re-entry back into earth, amen, the, the most critical phase of it, amen, was having a proper shield, amen. Although they got up there, amen, but without the proper shield, amen, they were burned up, amen. In the early modules, y'all, of coming back, amen, when some of the towels would come loose, they did extensive, uh, 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 you know, investigation to find out why did the towels come loose, amen, to make sure, amen, that although we got them up there, we need to bring them back. And one of the, one of the critical things was bringing them back. It was not the instrumentation, but it was the shield. Amen. Because when that thing came back through the through the uh, through the atmosphere of the earth, because of the speed it was going, it produced such a such a heat. Amen. Upon that thing, that the shield y'all had to keep the heat away from. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. See when 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 they don't. Oh God. See when you're going through hell in your life. Amen. Without a shield, you're gonna get burned up. Amen. But when you say that God is my shield, it means that God would the Flat that stuff off of your life and oh God, although I'm going through hell, I ain't getting burned up. Oh God. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. He's my shield. Oh, praise God. And then, and, and then the, the other word is it, seven words. I don't know whether you, you know, I look at stuff uh, you know, analytically, but there's seven words and you, you know, y'all know seven is uh, complete. Amen. And, and, and the second word in the song, it said that he's my strength. Now, I'm not going to preach this. I just want to share that I just want to encourage y'all. Amen. The second word says, now, he's my shield. But then it says, he's my strength. Oh, praise God. Amen. There are times, y'all, amen, where we have, don't have the strength to do it. In other step, amen, where Brittany is, Brittany, wave your hand. Just wave your hand. Amen. Right now, Brittany is pregnant with child. Hallelujah. Amen. But see, if, if Brittany needs strength to be able to bring that baby forth, amen, there's going to be a time when that baby won't come out. Amen. It's not See, it's not contingent on the baby to bring himself out. Amen. Brittany have to have the strength, and the doctor's going to tell her, you got to be strong, and you got to push. Come on, y'all. And sometimes, y'all, you need to get through some stuff, and you need to just push. Amen. And so God becomes your strength. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that, y'all. Hallelujah. When sometimes I can't get through, but I know he's my strength, so he pushes me. 
Hallelujah. And then it says, y'all, that he's my portion. Portion, y'all, speaks of having stuff, amen, the ability to get stuff done. Oh, praise God. Amen. So, so it's good that I come back, but I'm glad that he's my portion. Hallelujah. In other words, he gives me his stuff, Sister Julia, that I can still go on. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God because, y'all, he fills my cup up. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. And then it says he's my deliverer. Amen. And I don't care who you are, y'all. Amen. But every once in a while, you need some deliverance. Amen. I, amen. Amen. You need you need some deliverance. Now, I know that I've been talking to y'all about deliverance and amen. Something that God been working me on, and I've been fighting God and, and God been dealing with me, and I I I'm I'm, I'm my God, I mean with tooth and nail, I'm scratching, I'm holding on to it, and I don't want to get this stuff, and God keep messing with me, amen, on this deliverance stuff, hallelujah, amen, God want to deliver us, amen, now, and when you speak of deliverance, y'all, amen, you need, there's a whole lot of stuff people need to be delivered from, Oh, praise God. A whole lot of stuff. Sometimes your mindset, amen, you, you, you need to be delivered from your mindset. Hallelujah, amen, because you think wrong. And y'all, listen, one of the most difficult things it is to do, y'all, is to change the way you think. It is difficult to change the way that you think. Oh, praise God. That's how I'm going to pray for you because some of y'all got some mindsets, amen, that you need to be delivered from. Oh, praise God. Amen. And then the, 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 the next word was that he's my shelter. Come on, y'all. Amen. He, he will hide me from the rain. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Amen. God, listen, he's my shelter. Oh, praise God. And underneath his everlasting arms, amen, I, I can hide. He, God will hide me. Sometimes you need shelter. Sister Davis says, I, amen, I told her on this year, I said, on this year we come up on our 49th anniversary, and I told her, I said, this year you ain't cooking no turkey dinner. You ain't going to put no time for the family or nothing like that. I said, I'm taking you away, amen, around Thanksgiving, amen. But what happened to us, Ella Oliver, the, the, the place that I had already, a reserve, amen, uh, 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 what was the storm which uh, Irma just came through, amen, and so Irma messed up, amen, Irma did some damage, amen, praise God, the place that we, was, we, were, we were going to stay, hallelujah, says so David said, I, I want to know where we're going, so, so I need to know where we're going, so I give her where we was going at, you know, and, uh, and so she wanted to call up to see whether we were still going. Praise God. They said, we'll let you know. So then I, I brought the, the, the other day, I got an email and I brought the email. Amen. Uh, we, we ain't going. Amen. Uh, praise God. It's shut down for the rest of the year. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it means that I've got the, amen, look for someplace else to take her. Oh, praise God. Amen. Uh, because, see, when armor came through, amen, uh, the shelter that we was going to go at, y'all got destroyed. Come on, y'all. When God is your shelter, y'all, God protects you. Oh, praise God. Amen. God protects you. Hallelujah. So I'm glad that the Lord is my shelter. And then it said that he's my strong tower. Uh, not just a tower, but your strong tower. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you are out in the wilderness of life, y'all. You need a tower to find to get your way back home. Amen. You need a strong tower to pull you. You need a strong tower. Amen. The light. Amen. I, I think of a lighthouse when I think of a tower. Oh, praise God. Amen. And with the proper lighthouses, y'all, you will always, amen, you will never lose your way. Amen. As long as the light shines. God is such a strong tower. Not only will he allow you not to lose your way, but he'll draw you, amen, to himself. Oh, praise God. Amen. And the last thing it said, it says that he's my present help. He's my present help. You don't have to wait for God for tomorrow. God is ready right now. Amen. He's a right now God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so our God is an awesome God. Amen. You need to take that and uh, eternalize it in your life as you walk in your life when you realize that, you know, that God, wh what is it? He's my what? Come on, y'all. He's my, he's my shield. He's my strength. He's my 
My portion, he's my what? Deliverer, he's my what? Shelter. Come on, y'all. Yeah. See, listen, y'all. Don't just sing this stuff. Remember it. Come on. I ask God, Lord, help me to remember it, God, so I can eternalize in my life. He's my shelter. He's my strong tower. And now he's my present help, amen, in the time of trouble. I tell you, you're going to go through some trouble whether you want to or not. Praise God. It's not option. Well, let me get to the word of the Lord on this morning. Oh, praise God. Amen. I want to talk to you, amen, from three words on this morning. I don't know how it's all going to come together, but it's just on my heart. So however it comes out, it comes out. Oh, praise God. Amen. The, uh, I want to talk to you this morning about, about truth, love, and trust. Amen. Truth, love, and trust. Truth, love, and trust. Truth, love, and trust. And if you notice, just love is in the center, amen, because love has been, uh, I, I, I've been learning so much about love, amen, and, and, and what it is, and, amen, uh, you, you know, in relationship to God, and why is it, why we need it, oh, praise God, amen. But before you can ever come to love, amen, we've got to deal with truth. Oh, praise God. Amen. John 8 and 32 says, and you shall know the truth. Amen. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. When you're in bondage, let me uh, uh, suggest to you, amen, if you, are, if you are in any kind of bondage, it's because you're not free. Amen. And you're not free. Your freedom, <laughs> y'all, you, freedom because you've got the truth. See, understand that you can be in jail but still be free. When you have the truth, y'all, you understand that your, your, your condition does not dictate, y'all, amen, your freedom. I'll say it again. Your, your condition don't dictate your freedom, amen. Freedom, y'all, amen, freedom is from within, amen. Freedom lays on, amen, whether or not you have truth. Praise God, amen. Whether or not you have truth. Jesus said that these, these words in John 16 and 13, Amen. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Oh, praise God. See, one of the truths that we deal with today, y'all, amen, see, I am not without hope. Amen. I know there's some things coming. I, I, come on, y'all. Why do you know that? Amen. Because, y'all, because I've got the spirit of truth. Amen. And what the spirit of truth does not only keeps me in truth now, amen, but it also lets me know truth coming in the future. Oh, praise God. Amen. And the spirit of truth, he, he will guide you. I guide y'all is something that won't let you get off track. Oh, praise God. Amen. It's a guide you. Hey, amen. And so truth, y'all, when you don't have truth, then you're missing a key guide in your life. Yes, oh, praise God. Amen. And so we need truth. Now, why do I go there? I go there, y'all. Amen. Because I want to deal with a group of people that the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, amen, 5 and 14. Amen. Uh, it, 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 it says something to the, the uh, uh, um, well, let me deal with 14, 15, 14, 15, and 17 Corinthians. Amen. Because we're dealing with something, y'all. You need truth. And, and why I found out that a lot of people ain't dealing with truth. And I'm, they're not dealing with life because they're not dealing with the truth. To deal with life, you got to deal with truth. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. But l l let's look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians. 5 and 14, uh, uh, the, the one I want to get to is verse 15, but uh, verse 17. But to get to verse 17, I need to read verse 14. Yes, Amen. It says, for the love of Christ constrains us. Yes, Amen. Uh, uh, to be constrained, y'all, is to be pulled, right? Amen. It, it, it's, it's like being in a taunt position. Amen. So the love of Christ, it constrains us, Paul. is saying it constrains us. Why, why, do, why, do, why does that constrain you, Paul? He says, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. 
Amen. If one person died, all them all dead, right? Are y'all with me so far? All right. Verse number 15 says, and that, and that he died for all, they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again, right? Uh, y'all got that? All right. So what Paul premises this, amen. And so if you believe that he died for you, come on, y'all, amen. Now, if, if you believe that he died for you, now in your living, Y'all, you should not live for yourself. I say it again. If you believe that he died for you, in your living, you should not live unto you and for yourself. But you should live unto him which died and rose for you. Now, that's, that's, that's a foundation of truth. Amen. That, that, I, I'm getting to something, y'all. It's why we have uh, problems and situations, amen, because we do not apply truth that we say that we have. <coughs> Verse 17 says, therefore, and so the question is, what's this there for? <laughs> therefore, right? There's a reason why it's there, all right? Uh, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. And so here in this problem, okay, so I believe that Christ died for me. I believe he rose for me, right? Now, that if I believe in him, the Bible says, uh, amen, if I believe in him, if I'm in him, then I'm a new. I'm a new Creature, the, the, another uh, translation, we're, we're a new creation. Amen. Uh, better way to say, I'm a new creation. In other words, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one of a different kind. Amen. My origin has changed. Come on, y'all. Amen. In other words, what I'm related to, amen, has changed. What I used to be related to, I'm not related to no more because I've been born anew. That's why he said to Nicodemus, when Nicodemus came to Jesus at night, Jesus said, amen, if you want this thing, you've got to be born again. Come on, y'all. Amen. The problem with us, y'all, amen, we're trying to get new life, y'all, amen, and not come out the old one. Oh, praise God. Amen. To get the new life, you got to let go of the old one. The old one got to die. Oh, praise God. Amen. And that's why the Bible said, amen, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. In other words, you, you, where you came from, change. Where you came from changed. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's truth, y'all. That's true. And, and I'm amazed, y'all. Amen. That, and, and please forgive us of the clergy because we keep trying to make everybody, amen, recipient of a lifestyle that you can only get, amen, through a death process. Oh, praise God. Amen. We, we, we're trying to give you something new. Amen. Without you dying first. Amen. The only way you're going to get this, y'all, you got to die. Amen. And what we're doing, we're telling people you ain't got to die. You can just imbibe in it. Amen. That's not the truth. Amen. That is not. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Oh, praise God. Amen. He's a new creator. Well, let me look at John chapter 15, verse 9 to 13. It says, Jesus said that as the Father, amen, and, and so I want to establish that, y'all, because when we get into talking about love, amen, love is, 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 is based on truth. Love is based on truth. Come on, y'all. I'll say it again. Love is based on truth. I don't know why all these folks is talking about, y'all. It's some kind of infatuation, but it's not love. Because love is based on truth. Oh, praise God. Amen. Love is based on truth. And you'll see this from the word of God. Amen. Because people say that they love God, but amen, but what they do and what they say don't line up. 
Amen. So when you don't have truth, y'all, amen, then you cannot love without truth. To listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. Now, that's what Jesus said in verse 9 of uh, 15 chapter of John. He said, my, my daddy loved me. And because he loved me, then I love you. Praise God. Understand, y'all, amen, we are not the originators of love. Oh, praise God. Amen. Love has to come some, from someplace. And hence, y'all, I believe some of our relationship problems, uh, amen, is because we don't have the truth. And number two, y'all, because we don't have love. We don't have love. Now, Jesus becomes a pattern for us, y'all, to show us, y'all, amen, if, if you want to live in this life, amen, and, and want to give it to you the way God gave it to him. He says in verse, uh, in verse number 10, he said, if you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. And isn't it amazing, y'all, that we think that we can abide in his love without doing what he said to do? May I tell you, you're crazy. Come on, y'all, you're crazy. Holly, you cannot abide in him if you don't do what he says do. And we constantly try to tell people I'm in him when, uh, y'all, please help me. See, I am not judging you, but I have learned to be a fruit inspector. And because I'm a fruit inspector on my property, amen, I've got a, I've got a, a, a peach tree. Amen. And my peach tree it grew up, and what happened was that the, the main part of the tree, uh, I know, got infected and died, and the offshoot lived. And so when the offshoot lived, so I kept, you know, it lived, I ain't gonna do nothing, but it offshooted, and then part of that died, and then the limb offshot, and, and that lived, and, and then that ran over to my, on my neighbor's property, hanging over on his property, but it's still alive. Amen, and I looked at it the other day, it's, it, it's filled with peaches, and the peaches has fallen on his property. But it's a lie. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a lie. Amen. Now, I recognize they are peaches. Now, next to that, I got an apple tree. Now, there's a difference between an apple and a peach. Oh, praise God. Amen. And so I know the apple tree from the peach. And the reason why, because one have apples and one got a peach. A peach got, it's a fuzzy little thing. Got, uh, you know, a peach ain't, you know, it don't feel good. I mean, you know, a peach, you know, an apple got a smooth skin. Come on, y'all. Amen. Now, I would defy you to tell me, amen, that the peach is the apple. Amen. Because, see, I'm a fruit inspector, and so I know the peach from the apple. Oh, praise God. Amen. And so you can't come to me and tell me, uh, Pastor, that, uh, that you, you producing some, 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 some peaches on the apple tree. I said, uh-uh. Uh, uh, no, no, because see, I observe, amen, and I know the one from the other, and that's true. Yeah. Come on, y'all, amen. Also, y'all, I know the shape of the leaves of the trees is different. Yeah. Come on, y'all, amen. The, the, the bark on the trees is different. Come on, y'all. There are telltale signs, y'all, amen, that lets me know one tree from the other tree. Yeah. Amen. And so in nature, y'all, I understand that. Why can't I also understand that when it comes to dealing with spiritual things? So I know, oh God. See, I know what kind of fruit you're showing me. Oh, praise God. Amen. I know what kind of fruit you're showing me. Look at the next verse Jesus said. He said, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Jesus said, I love you. I want you to continue in my love. And, and number two, he says, I give you this truth. Amen. Why? So you can have joy. Amen. And, and that my joy can stay in you. 
Oh, praise God. Understand, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The Bible said that the joy of the Lord, we talked about one of those words was strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, y'all. Amen. And so when you look for strength, I want to ask you, do you have joy? Amen. Because out of joy, you get strength, y'all. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he, he went on to say, he said, this is my commandment that you, and I love it, that you what? That you love one another. How? As I have loved you. What, what did Jesus say? Jesus gave me a pattern. Amen. That I can follow after. Come on, y'all. He said, I need to love like others, like he loved me. Amen. That's what he said. And then he said, he said, greater love has no man than this, that man should lay down his life for his friend. And he laid down his life for us. Oh, praise God. Amen. Now, let me propose to you, amen, if you do not love, if you don't love, then I question whether or not do you have this new lifestyle. Because to have this new lifestyle, y'all, you need to have love. To have love, y'all, amen, uh, you, you need truth. Amen, you need truth. Praise God. Amen. And, and while I'm getting at y'all, amen, this life is all about love. Jesus reduced all he had to say, all of the, he, he said all of the words, this whole book could reduce into commandment. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Number two, love your fellow man like you do yourself. Two. Not a thousand. Two. Isn't it amazing? Amen. In this new life, y'all, amen, he said that, he said you got the love. It's all about love. Praise God. It's about loving God and it's about loving people. I'm amazed that people ain't got no problem loving God. They'll tell you how much they love God, but when it comes to people, they'll cuss you out. I come over on this side. That side don't seem to want to give me no good reception. See, People that say how much they love God. Yeah, yeah, I love God. You know, me and God is like this. Yeah, that's fine with you and God. How about you and me? Well, that, that you know, I mean, you, 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 you already, you already pushing. Now you keep going. Come on, you already pushing. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. See, but you say you love God. Amen. But you got a problem with me. We, y'all, we want, this life is about love. Yes, it is. It's about us coming into relationship with him so he can show us how to be in relationship with one another. If you don't have a relationship with him, then you're going to have a problem having a relationship with me. So we wonder sometimes, why do we have problems with one another? And the reason is because the truth is, you've got a problem with God. There's a problem with your radical relationship. And so you've got a problem in your horizontal relationship. See, because see, if you accurately understand how and what God has done for you, Oh, praise God. And when you internalize that, you would do that for others. Praise God. Amen. Amen. To live in obedience to God's command, we must live with a heavenly perspective. You got to live with a heavenly perspective. See, one of the problems with church folks is y'all got an earthly perspective. Y'all got an earthly perspective. I'm doing okay, amen, but, you, you know, uh, if I got to deal with that, that Oliver, one more time, y'all going to have to help me and pray for me one, just one more time. Wow. No, you got a wrong perspective. You ain't got a heavenly perspective. 
See, the Bible, y'all like to read 1 Corinthians 13 about love. Love is kind. Come on, y'all. Love, oh God. I, I, I need to go there and read 13, y'all. I'm going to go there because y'all need to be reminded what love is all about. Oh, praise God. Amen. But we lie and don't do the truth. Uh, well, come on. Will y'all get me 1 Corinthians 13? I need to go there because y'all been reading that all year long. Y'all been reading it up here every morning. So let, let's go to it because y'all, this, this is the key, amen, of why we are living and how we live, amen. Come on, y'all. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number one. Praise God. Amen. Y'all holler when they get it. Yeah. All right. They got it. All right. See, he, listen to Paul. He said, do I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity or love? He, I, he said, I become as sound and brass a tank in the sin. In other words, y'all, whatever you're doing, amen, it don't mean nothing. You, you, oh, praise God. Amen. You, 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 you. Clinging symbol. Sound and breath. You know where you, you, you ain't you ain't nowhere. Verse number two. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move my and have not love, I ain't nothing. Yeah, I don't want to know about your faith. I don't know about what you can do. Amen. When you don't love me. Y'all need to understand everything has to sit on love. So don't pray for me when you don't love me. Don't lay hands on me when you don't love me. Come on, y'all. You, listen, you, you want to tell me something from God and you don't love me. Uh, look at verse 3. And though I bestow all my, oh God, all my gifts to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, I have not cared to profit enough. In other words, yo, know, they just, I went down to serve in, in Texas, and then I'm going down to serve in Florida. Amen. And I got disease and I died from it. But you don't love me. There's a lot of people that do stuff, but they don't love. See, and God said, when you don't love, come on, y'all, it ain't nothing. It ain't profiting you. Amen. See, in life, y'all, I believe in a prophet. P-R-O-F-I-T. I believe that God, in everything that I do, I believe I should make a profit. In other words, I don't believe that I should do stuff just to do it. A profit, y'all, is return on my investment. So when I invest in God, I expect a profit. Amen. See, people will tell you, amen, no, you ain't getting up that. Oh, no, oh, no, amen. That's not, that's not true. Amen. That goes against the principle that God lay out. And in God's principles, y'all, it said, you read the scripture this morning, he that sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Amen. In other words, y'all, if I give a lot, I should get a lot back. It's according to the way that I met. In other words, y'all, there ought to be a return on your investment. I'm, I'm surprised of how many people's lives don't have a return. So I could be very nasty and say, why don't you just go ahead and in it because you ain't, you ain't doing nothing but cluttering up space. See, God wants your life to have a profit. God wants you to, want your life to give a return. Amen. Amen. Not only for others, but also for you. Uh, next verse of uh, uh, Corinthians. Uh, he say, Love suffered long, and it's, listen, it suffers long, and it's kind. Envieth not. Vaunteth not itself up. It's not puffed up. Don't make a whole lot of things about itself. Amen. I like the first verse, it's kind. 
I, I've seen a whole lot of people that say they love God, but they ain't kind. They, they just, they just ain't kind. Verse number five. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. And that's one that gets everybody in trouble. That P-R-I-D-E. Yeah. yeah, that gets gets everybody in trouble. It's not rude, unmanly, does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking, it is not touch it or fret for or resent for it takes no account of the evil done to it it pays no attention to a suffered wrong how many of y'all please don't raise your hand can say after reading that I got love see the, the thing about love y'all see the, the key word I want you to see love is not self it's not self seeking when it's all about you I question whether it's about love See, love is selfless. It's not selfish. Go verse 6. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Thank you for giving me the amplifier. Yes. Yeah, that, that's what love does. It, it rejoices. Not, you know, when I, you know, you know, we don't rejoice when somebody is injured. We don't rejoice when somebody is hurt. We don't rejoice when something bad happens to someone. Verse 7. Love bears up under anything. Listen to it. Under anything and everything that comes and is ever ready to believe the best of every person, it hopes of faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. That's because in love, there's strength in love. When you got love, you got strength. Amen. You can stand up some, under some stuff. Oh, praise God. Amen. You can take some stuff. Hallelujah. Y'all, you got to ask yourself, when I can't take nothing, amen, do I have love? Wow. Watch out. Next verse. Watch out. Love never fails. Understand? Love. Now, if you're failing, understand, it's, love never fails. Never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose of God, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongue, they will be destroyed and ceased. And as for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. But love never fails. Every other thing, y'all, has an end to it. The only thing that does in this love, love will continue. Praise God. That's verse, verse 9. For our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete, imperfect, and our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary, incomplete, and imperfect. Verse 10, amen. But when it when when the complete and perfect come and incomplete and imperfect become antiquated, void, and superseded. Verse 11, amen. When I was a child and he give you a knowledge, I talked like a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child. Now that I have become a man, I am. I, I'm done with childish ways and I put them aside. Amen. And, and he's talking about love. The, uh, amen. And he's talking about our progression is coming into that. Verse number, next verse. Amen. For now, and he's telling, we're looking in a mirror that gives only a dim blurry re reflection of reality as in a riddle or enigma. But then when perfection come we shall see in reality and face to face now I know in part but then I shall be, know and understand fully and clearly even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God so what he's telling you y'all I, I understand that we're imperfect we're coming into perfection amen at this time amen we're looking at things as a mirror we see things dimly Amen. But we're moving into perfection where God, amen, God is going to make everything fully known to us. Praise God. Verse 13. Here's the clicker. He says, and so faith, 
which is great. How many of y'all know you need faith? He says, here's faith, here's hope. He says, and love abide. Faith, conviction, and belief respect the man's relationship to God and divine things, hope, joyfully and confident expectant of eternal salvation. Love is true affection for God and man growing out of God's love for and in us these three, but the greatest of these is love. What is love? It's God's affection. You know, coming from God through us, amen, to others. Praise God. Amen. John Thank you. John, 1 John 4 and 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And number two, you're known of God. So when you love, then I know, oh, oh uh, uh, fruit inspector, amen, I know, come on, y'all, when you're born of God, when you got love, you've been born. When you don't have love, you ain't been born. You said, don't tell me that I ain't right. And people get indignant. Amen. About you saying something about them. But I'm just a fruit inspector. Amen. I just tell you what I see. And what I see is what you're bearing. See, we are to, we, we, y'all understand, we're to live daily lives, amen, I, 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 we're to live daily saying yes to being born of God and to pursue knowing the Father. That's how we're to live. When we, when, when our, when, when, when our, when we experience the love of the Father, amen, then, then we'll be transformed into instrument of his love so my question is have y'all experienced the love of the father because see, if you have not experienced the father's love then you cannot give me love Amen. see people try to make this thing generate from us it don't generate from us it generates from God if you don't have the Father's love, that's why Jesus always talked about the Father. His entire relationship was with us was based on his relationship with the Father. And I wonder whether or not the people have a relationship with the Father. First John 4 and 19 said we love him because why? He first loved us. See, it's only after being loved of and by God that we can truly love others. See, y'all, one of the problems is people are trying to love from a, a head point of view, from a knowledge point of view, instead of from a heart point of view. See, I can only love you when... When I recognize God loved me, and when I receive God's love in me, then I can love you. But if I have not received his love, I don't care what I do, whether I'm the pastor, the preacher, the deacon, the usher, whatever, amen, without the Father's love, I ain't going to love you. I do religious stuff. Come on, y'all. I, I hypocritically get by. But I ain't gonna love you. And one of the things y'all we're dealing with, amen, because we don't accurately identify, amen, people that has died and that are new. And when you're new, there ought to be new stuff coming out of you. But what we do, we make excuses, amen, for all attitudes, all habits, all lifestyle, amen, that has not been born again. Because a lot of these people, they're in position in our churches. And so we make excuses for them. Instead of getting back to the basis, y'all, what Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. If you ain't born again, y'all, that's a problem. And the problem is the Father's love, amen, it's not in your heart. 
See, if we have not encountered the heart of the Father, amen, we're incapable. We're incapable of living selfless. Because my question is, Lord, why are these people that say that they love you and know you, why are they so selfish? And what God's, and really what God showed me, they, they don't love me. And when they don't love me, when I'm not feeling their heart, amen, then everything is about them. It's not about me. First John 4, 20 and 21 says, if a man say, I love God and hate is his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this is a commandment, praise God, that we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. That's the truth of God's word. So I don't care what kind of church you go to or what kind of religion you go to, if you don't love God, if you don't love your brother, amen, you, 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 you're out. You got to love God, you got to love your brother. You say he stinks. That's why God, you got to love God first because what God does when, when, when you got the love of God in you, amen, God makes your nose blind, amen, toward his stink. Come on, Come on. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of fault. See, but when you don't love, you can't cover it. I'm not saying they did wrong. Yeah, they're guilty of sin. Come on, y'all. Amen. God will take care of them. Amen. But my love will cover them. My love ain't going to expose them. I'm going to cover them. Come on. That, that, that's taught in the word of God, y'all. Amen. When, 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 uh, what, when Noah was drunk, was he wrong? Yeah. And the reason why, amen, he, he cursed his son, son, amen, is because he didn't cover him. All of them seen him naked, but the two covering him. What's, what, what is your problem? How many person have you seen messed up that you covered? I'm not saying they wasn't guilty. I, I, listen, y'all, understand, love covers. Amen. I'm not a judge. God judges. But I'm called a cover. 1 Corinthians 16 and 14, it said, let all things be done in love. All things, not something, all things be done in love. I don't care what you're doing. The Bible said it needs to be done in love. Until you make time and space to let God love you consistently, you will not be transformed or healed to walk in freedom. See, God need to, you, you, you got to spend some time with God. Amen? And it, it can't be a one-time thing. The word is consistently. You've got to consistently deal with God enough. Amen. So that God deal with you enough, y'all. So that God will transform you. Amen. So that you can walk in freedom. If you remember in the Bible, y'all, with Enoch, Enoch walked with God. It implies a consistency. He didn't walk with him one day. But it was a consistent walk. And the Bible said God, Enoch was not because God took him. And so it will be with you and I. You've got to consistently, don't just walk with God because you're coming to church. Don't walk with God because you're going out with some other believers. No, you've got to walk with God consistently. You've got to walk with God when nobody is around. When nobody is looking at you. Amen. You've got to walk with God, y'all. I praise God. Amen. When, amen. When, when you're out of the country, See, y'all, love 
love is about making an eternal impact. Amen. See, love sets us free. Amen. From the bonds of worldliness. Amen. You, you, you say, well, but what's going on? This is why, amen, the, the church people are so messed up. Amen. The worldliness, uh, amen, testifies to the fact that there's a lack of love in them from the Father. Because, see, you ought to love God enough that you would walk so circumspectly because you don't want your brother and your sister to go to hell because of what they're doing. But rather, you all walk in lifestyle so that you say, I'm light, follow me to the master. Instead of trying to, amen, be like them. Yeah, God is looking for transformation. Praise God. God is looking for transformation. Praise God. Amen. Love empowers us to, 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 to live for heaven over the pursuits of the world. So I understand y'all. I understand you're going someplace. I understand you want something. But see, when you when when when, when you have the love of God in your life. Amen. God will moderate your life according to his love. Amen. What I see today, y'all, amen, we don't love God enough to let God moderate our lifestyle. We need to understand this love that draws the lost into the fold of God. I want people into the fold of God. I just don't want to be the one, that, only one that make it. I want others to make it. So I, I, out of love for them, praise God, because God, I died to my old self, I rose in newness of life, amen, and I want them because the Lord said that I am the light, we are the light of the world, amen. So I need to make sure that my light is always shining. So if somebody that's in darkness, they'll see my light and they'll get out of darkness. See, y'all need to understand what light does. When you're the greater the darkness, the more powerful the light. Amen. Praise God. See, if everybody's in darkness, nobody can get out. But if there's light, somebody can get out. That's love. So we got truth. We got love. Now we need to trust God. Need to trust God. Job said, Job went through some hell in his life. Can y'all witness to that? And Job said, though he slayed me, Yet will I trust him. Mm -hmm. Though he slay me, I yet will. In other words, whatever happens to me, it will not move my trust for him. When you love God, you will trust God. And so Psalms 18 2 said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler. And the, and the horn of my salvation, and he's my high tower. All those words I talked to you about, y'all, Psalms 18. Got to be all of those things for you. Yeah, but you got to trust him. Praise God. Amen. And Psalms 37, 5 said, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Bring what to pass? What, whatever you're trusting him for. It's going to happen. God going to allow it to happen. So I need to close on this morning. I want to thank you for your time on this morning. Allow me to talk to you, amen, about, about truth and about love and about trust. Oh, praise God, amen. Because without truth, you would not love. And without love, you would not trust. They all go hand in hand together. Oh, praise God, amen. All go hand in hand hand in hand together but one of the things that you, you, you you're going to face y'all you're going to face a, an enemy 
that does not want you to make it. Oh, praise God. Amen. Don't want you to make it. Amen. His name is, the, well, one of his names he go by is devil, Satan, Lucifer, accuser of the brother. This is him. Y'all need to understand, please, let me speak very plainly and very clearly. Amen. I don't care what Ella Curtis Nova did to me. I don't care what Ella Jessa Oliver has did to me. Neither one of them is the devil. When you apply truth to your life, whatever opposition you're coming from people, you need to identify the devil and it's not the people. You, you, you know, one of the things, one of the biggest lies put out there today, and the devil is one put out, yeah, I ain't going there because those people down there ain't right. That's a lie. See, the devil is the one who's telling you all these lies. Yeah, you know, I, 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 would, I would love to, but, you know, I... I you know, I'm, do, I'm doing okay until I, until I seen Curtis. You're a liar and the truth ain't in you. See, y'all need to learn the truth and the truth is identify who the enemy is. Now, Curtis might allow the enemy to use him, but I need to have enough wisdom to know that he is not the enemy. When you're born again, y'all, you, then you, you have wisdom. Amen. To, uh, I told you I'm a fruit in You have wisdom to differentiate one thing from another. And so then you go and you stay home for a month. Why? Because the last time I was here, your Curtis looked at me cross-eyed. So I ain't coming back. He needs to apologize for looking at me cross-eyed. Come on, y'all. I, I, these are realities. These are things that happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The greatest defense against the devil, y'all, is that we need to possess an honest and humble heart before God. Amen. Number one, you need to be honest. Number two, you got to be humble. Amen. When the Holy Spirit shows up into your life and Amen. When the Holy Spirit uh, shows you an area in your life in your life that you need to repent of, Amen. Uh, we've got to learn how to overcome our instinct to defend ourselves. I say it again. When the Holy Spirit convicts you of something you need to repent in your life, you've got to overcome your instinct of always y'all wanting to defend yourself. Our sense of self-preservation, the self-preservation instant must be submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ because he's alone is our advocate. Yeah, listen, y'all. We got one advocate, it's God. Let me give y'all a statement. Listen, when you're wrong, when you're wrong, y'all ain't got nothing to cover up. When you're right, y'all need to cover it up. So, you got to let God be your advocate. Instead of, and this comes from the world, y'all, we've got this self-preservation instant. If I say something, I, I use somebody, I'm going to use you, Julia. If I say something to so, Sister so, so, Julia, well, Sister so, Julia, I missed you Tuesday night. And Sister Julia started going, <laughs> Like, can, 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 can I have some time, time for myself? She got a problem. I love her, but she's got a problem. I love her, but she's got a problem. I want to get plain to y'all so that y'all don't go out here mistaken what I'm saying. No, that's what I'm saying. Amen. If I call you on something, amen, and you got wind up in your jaw, if you are right, you ain't get, if you're right, you don't need an excuse. If you're wrong, you don't have one. Ain't no reason for you to get wind in your jaws because I, well, where was you at last Sunday? What, was I the only one not there? Come on, y'all. Let's deal, let's deal with some reality. I, I, mean, I don't want to deal in the clouds amen, anymore. I want to deal with reality. Let me walk down y'all street or where y'all are. 
Y'all got attitudes. You need to humble yourself. I said, Lord, Lord, save me some more. Now, I, I'm serious. Amen. Because you need, to, you need to let yourself know I ain't right. You need to let yourself know I'm not right. I want to close from the book of James, chapter number four. He said, but he, he giveth more grace. In chapter four, verse six. Wherefore, he said, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. God resists the proud, but you give grace to your humble. When you humble yourself, God will give you grace. Amen. I, I pride y'all. I say I pride because we all got problems in that area. Amen. We all, and, and, come on, don't lie and say, well, not me. I, I'm saved to bone. Yeah, you're saved to bone, but you got some pride. So the Bible says, in verse 7, submit yourself therefore to God. So we end up, y'all, we got truth, we got love, we got trust, but then you've got to learn to submit to God. Don't submit to me, submit to God. Because when you submit to God, you, 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 me and you will get okay. Amen. Submit yourself Therefore, the God, and then the Bible, listen to the Bible. He's, the Bible said, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Y'all got problems with the devil. Let me ask you, have you been submitting yourself to God? And then the Bible said, resist it. So when he said, come on, let's go out, you said, oh, no. Well, come on. You said, no. Resist them. Do y'all understand? To resist means to say no. And then he'll flee from you. Last statement. Victory for our lives, for your life and my life, begins with Jesus on our lips. But it will not be consummated until the nature of of Jesus is in our heart. It needs to be here, but it won't be consummated until it's here. Say, Pastor, what do you mean? A person, individual, can get married. Their marriage, although they're married, they got a license. They are really not married until their relationship has been consummated. If they have not consummated their relationship, they can go to the judge and get their marriage a no because it was on their lips. It never came to the heart. See, a lot of... Mm, uh, let, let, let me rephrase it so y'all won't get mad at it. Some folks have Jesus on their lips but they have not consummated him in their hearts. And so that's a problem. So you got the paper. Y'all got the paper. We marry. We marry. But I'm looking because I'm a fruit inspector. Five months, nothing happened. Six months, nothing happened. Seven months, still nothing. Nine months, nothing. Y'all been married for a year. Now, y'all gonna have any kids? We ain't consummated our marriage. When the marriage is not consummated, you can't get fruit. When, you, when your life has not been consummated with Christ, amen, there, there'll be no fruit. Oh, that's, that's another message. Thank you, Lord. Let, please let it go. The, the Lord just, just told me uh, about the barrenness, but I don't want to deal with the barrenness. Jesus. When it's not consummated, there's barrenness. So, so there's no 
there's, there's, no, there's no fruit. Nothing will come of that. I want to pray for you this morning.